The home versus the enterprise Wi-Fi environment is very different. Let's find out how. Click that notification bell, click to subscribe. Let's find out the differences. Your home router, that device that you have, sits there warm and cozy and doesn't have to deal with the bad things like rain and wind and humidity. It's just comforted in your house. An enterprise access point rarely gets that. Enterprise access points have to be uh, able to handle huge temperature swings, even indoor huge temperature swings, humidity, wind, rain, snow, sleet, hail. It's gotta be able to handle all of it. So environmentally, an access point that is an enterprise class just naturally, even if it's designed for indoor environments, it naturally has to be able to be more robust than what you have in your home. The other challenges in an enterprise is a lot of them are highly mobile. So uh, maybe here's a good example is the ice cream that you eat, uh, you know, got picked up on a pallet and that pallet, that forklift has a computer on it that says, hey, take this pallet from point A to point B but it's maybe zero degrees or even colder in that environment. The access point that had to be there uh, not, not only had to handle the cold, but when that uh, forklift drove away at 10, 20, 30 miles per hour, which probably converts to something in kilometers, uh, when it drove away, it has to connect to multiple access points in sequence. Hey, I'm connected here, then here, then I'm connected here, boom, 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 because again, you know, this may be a million square foot environment uh, to th that it has to connect in. Home devices are not designed to do that. And it's not their fault. I don't blame them for not designing to do that. But that's something that is in the enterprise we have to think about is those highly mobile environments. With those environments, again, we're not having one or two access points. There are dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands in a location to serve the devices that are there. So it's very important to be able to handle that environment. Uh, as an example, high density. What that means is a high number of connected devices. Think about a stadium. It's one of the most difficult environments in Wi-Fi to handle, but you have your access point, your enterprise class AP, and it maybe have 50 or 100 or even more people connected to it. A, consumer devices are not designed nor usually capable of doing that. Uh, there's a lot of coordination that an access point thinks about in its brain, and that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about here, but it has a lot of coordination it has to do, and consumer devices just aren't designed for that. And again, I don't blame them. That's not what their intent is. But not only does that access point in, say, a stadium have to handle all those connections, it has to handle understanding and listening to the communication of many others. For those of you parents out there, think about this. If you're just, you and I are having a conversation, that's no problem. Imagine having that conversation with a thousand screaming kids around you, and we still have to be able to talk. It, you kind of have to concentrate a bit more, and it takes a bit more power to get that through. And that's what enterprises have to deal with at the Wi-Fi level. There's also in the same vein that of interference. Now the technical term for interference is non-Wi-Fi, but just uh, signals that are out there that have a negative effect on Wi-Fi, enterprise systems are much more equipped to handle that difference. Again, if, if someone's yelling in my ear and can I still communicate well while I'm hearing this interference, while the vacuum cleaner is, is causing all this noise. Wi-Fi systems have to be able to handle that as well. But in the home environment, it's pretty rare for them to encounter something so complex uh, from an interference perspective. But when uh, a company like Extreme builds a device, we don't know where it's going to go. We don't know that, oh, this is just gonna be in a nice little home uh, it has to be built, not only physically, but technically has to be built in order to handle those kind of crazy and difficult environments. Another component is that of just security. Now, when you think security, you think Wi-Fi security, which is important. The other is physical security. On an enterprise system, there's a way to lock access points down, like physically lock them to a wall or a ceiling. That's the kind of security that there has to be because people sometimes want to steal those things. The other is just Wi-Fi security. 
In your home, you are likely using something what's called pre-shared key, which is great. You'll learn about that probably some other time. Uh, but in an enterprise environment, you need to have very robust security that really just doesn't exist in most consumer devices. Again, no fault of the consumer device manufacturers, they're just not designed to do this kind of thing. But you have to have authentication and encryption of the highest level in an enterprise. So it's really important for an enterprise manufacturer to have those features versus again, something with a little sim more simpler uh, environment like uh, a home. Hopefully that gives you a good look at what the differences are between enterprise and Wi-Fi systems that you use in your home. And that's, you know, that's why we don't ever say, we, we make sure people understand, you can't use a home device in an enterprise. It doesn't scale, it won't function well. Uh, again, the price tag looks usually pretty enticing because it does all these functions. But in the end, it just isn't designed for that environment. So hopefully we've told you uh, kind of some of the differences as to why that won't work.